I know this feeling. Can you imagine what it's like being in a group with Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> I would just torture myself in my head like, well, I can't wear this dress because they're going to say it's like B, or I can't have a song like that because it sounds too much like B. We all know that one of the things that Kelly Rowland has had to deal with over the years are the constant comparisons to Beyonce. But has Ba really done enough to discourage people from all the comparisons? Because from where some people are seated, it's really giving fake friend who doesn't care how it affects Kelly honey. Is there a chance that Kelly also feels the same that Beyonce is a fake friend? That's exactly what we are going to be talking about. So get seated loves child. I know it's quite unfortunate that even though Kelly has made her mark by herself by being a Grammy award winning artist and New York Times best selling author with multiple platinum selling records movie accolades production credits. And these are just a few of her accomplishments. Many interviews tend to heavily include questions about Beyonce and Destiny's Child. For instance, there was an interview she did on Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg, and the host just kept insisting that Kelly came second to Beyonce. You happen to be standing next to the brightest light on planet Earth. Like, you think Big Boy from Outcast has it tough being next to Andre. You were with Beyonce, and not only did you not, like, fight it, it seems like you really loved the position that you were in and took it seriously. Thing, light attracts light. I am light. Mm. So I am a beautiful brown shining light. So I don't think anybody's light dims anyone else's. Mm. I think that when other people start to compare you, I think that that's when it shows how dim they are of themselves. Mm. So I don't take somebody else trying to dim my light anymore for anybody else. I love B. I know that she's a light, but I know that I'm a light. I mean, the conversation could have just ended right there. But the host doubled down on his remarks about Kelly's role within Destiny's Child. And she was just not having it. She was like, my sister has knocked down doors and made positions for so many women that look like her that are a deeper shade than her. But specifically for black women and put black women in other places we're grateful for her. But also somebody else did that for her and another group has done that for us and I do it for other brown girls. So it's a cycle and a space for all of us to open up doors for each other instead of compare. Well said Kelly, well said. You know, as recently as a few months ago, Kelly was also asked about Beyonce on her appearance on B103 Atlanta and she was just like, y'all, I'm done for good. So Kelly was there discussing her Netflix thriller Mopa when mid-interview host Big Tigger asked her about Bond's announcement of Act 2 and the possibility of Act 3 being a Destiny's Child reunion album. Uh, your sister dropped a whole new uh, couple of songs and it's my understanding that Renaissance 2 may or may not be uh, country-based. Uh, and then there's a rumor going around that Renaissance 3 may be either rock-based or a DC reunion. That is her business to talk about. <laughs> Kelly was like, ask them, I'm here to talk about Mia Kula. And that's what I'm excited about. I mean, she definitely stood her ground there. But that doesn't mean that the comparison hasn't affected her. In fact, there was a time in 2020 during an episode of The Voice Australia where Kelly opened up about being compared to Beyonce after a contestant told her that he struggled to find his own identity. And she said she totally gets it. And I know that you all are tired of answering those questions, but fans like me for the DC and Destiny's Child reunion, and when y'all took that picture, I, it got me like really excited in my feelings. I'm like, okay, is this really going to happen? Well, we still gotta ask every time we see either you. We never see Baby, come on. Baby, these are just some of the instances where Kelly has been asked about Beyonce in an interview, or she's been forced to mention her cuz cuz if we start going through every time she was asked. We are probably going to need an entire day. It has got to be really exhausting for her at this point anyway. Like I said, we have people saying that given the number of times Kelly has been asked about Beyonce, Ba hasn't done enough to discourage it, and because of that people still say to date that she's a fake friend. In fact, we had people pointing out how Ba was seemingly encouraged and entertained by the comparison since the days of Destiny's Child. For instance, remember that forgotten Destiny's child Farrah Franklin who once suggested that Beyonce's father Matthew knows tried to take advantage of her. I, I would be lying if I said, no, it's never bothered me. That's bull. There was a whole decade, if I'm being completely honest, decade that it was like the elephant in the room, but the thing that was constantly be on my shoulder. So in an episode of Wendy Williams, Ferris spilled that all the other members of Destiny's Child had to tan so that they were significantly darker than Beyonce and Ba saw it. And she allowed it. 
In addition, we also had former band members citing their mistreatments like Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson, who dragged Matthew through the mud in a lawsuit citing his clear favoritism of especially Beyonce. Michelle Williams also said she was struggling to feel like herself again after Dissy, and in 2017 she revealed on the talk that she battled depression when she was part of the band, and that she expressed this to her manager who did not have the best response she said, when I disclosed it to our manager at the time bless his heart. He was like y'all just signed. Multi-million deal, and you were about to go on tour. What do you have to be depressed about? So I was like, oh maybe, I'm just tired of course, we can't blame Beyonce for how management treated other band members. But to a lot of people, it's the fact that she saw it and never stood up for any of them. Even Kelly, who literally grew up with her in her home. And I know that Kelly had a very hard time because when Latavia was asked what kind of a manager Matthew was, she said Matthew did not mean his words and it can be tough to take that kind of criticism when you are a little girl. We would try to not let it break us, but Kelly was the sensitive one and sometimes she would go to her room and cry now other. Then Beyonce alleged were not doing much to defend her bandmates' people. Also say that while Kelly is mostly responsible for how her career has turned out, they believe her friendship with Beyonce is part of the reason why she hasn't been as successful. We also have people who say that Beyonce was in a position to help her dear friend and sister during a time when Kelly was really struggling in her career. But she walked away from her for a couple years, not that they was obligated, and everyone has to get theirs out of the mud. The fans still feel like she could have thrown Kelly a bone honey. These are just some of the things that make people say that Beyonce is truly a fake friend. Plus, we all know that Beyonce is extremely ambitious and competitive, and she will do anything to stay on top and knock down competition. But whether or not she would do it to Kelly, that's up to you to decide anyway for some reason even. Though we've seen the comparisons, we've had people saying that Kelly was the one who was always jealous of Beyonce, and it doesn't help that she released Dirty Laundry opening up about being jealous of Beyonce's success. The troubles of going solo and struggling through a toxic relationship. It also doesn't help that in 2023, Kelly reflected on her biggest mistake, which according to her was the moment when she accidentally revealed the sex of Beyonce and Jay-Z's first child on Bang Showbiz. She said that was the worst moment ever. E it was bad because it was no one's business. I felt terrible because it's not my news. It was honestly the worst. It wasn't my news to share. And I didn't mean it like that. The she just kind of slipped out. Well, even though Kelly clarified that it was a mistake, we had people insisting that she revealed the gender on purpose because she has always been jealous of Beyonce. What do you think, guys? Has Beyonce always been a fake friend to Kelly? Do you think she intentionally did not help further her career or intentionally refused to discourage the comparisons that were visibly hurting Kelly? Do you even think that friendship is solid? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below. You happen to be standing next to the brightest light on planet Earth. Like you think Big Boy from Outcast has it tough being next to Andre. You were with Beyonce and not only did you not like fight it, it seems like you really loved the position that you were in and took it seriously. Thing, light attracts light. I am light. Mm. So I am a beautiful brown shining light. So I don't think anybody's light dims anyone else's. Mm. I think that when other people start to compare you, I think that that's when it shows how dim they are of themselves. Mm. So I don't take somebody else trying to dim my light anymore for anybody else. I love B. I I know that she's a light, but I know that I'm a light. I mean, the confession could have just ended right there. But the host doubled down on his remarks about Kelly's role within Destiny's Child. And she was just not having it. She was like, my sister has knocked down doors and made positions for so many women that look like her, that are a deeper shade than her, but specifically for black women, and put black women in other places we're grateful for her, but also somebody else did that for her and another group has done that for us and I do it for other brown girls so it's a cycle and the space for all of us to open up doors for each other instead of compare well said Kelly well said you know as recently as a few months ago Kelly was also asked about Beyonce on her appearance on B103 Atlanta and she was just like y'all I'm done for good so Kelly was there discussing her Netflix thriller Mopa when mid-interview host Big Tigger asked her about Bond's announcement of Act 2 and the possibility of Act 3 being a Destiny's Child reunion album.